me for mercy. So, buy your new set of tires this winter, and we'll pay the VAT for you. Yes, 0% VAT on selected Bridgestone or Firestone tires until 17 August. Visit us in store or on superquick.com for details. T's and T's apply. The 0% VAT will be applied in the form of a 15% discount. Super quick. Tire experts closer to you. Light up the outside of your house for extra security with quality products from Cash Build. Get a 400 watt security halogen light with sensor for just four two nine ninety five, and a well, two nine 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 for only sixty seven ninety five. Plus, every time you shop at Cash Build, you help to build South Africa. So for the lowest prices on quality building materials, tools, paint. Any and questions, hardware. I think, take the piece to the machine or Twitter. But we are live. On 31702. It is 16 minutes after 8. Now, reclaiming the soil, a black girl's struggle to find her African self. Jeff Court has spent decades in the public spotlight as a television and theatre actress, really becoming a household name in the film and television industry, but she's got a particularly interesting history. Uh, she was raised uh, by a white Jewish family with all the privileges that one could get. But at some point, the penny dropped and a moment of consciousness happened. And this is the story of her 10-year journey of self-discovery penned in this book, Reclaiming the Soil, A Black Girl's Struggle to Find Her African Self. We're joined, of course, on the line. Uh, by the Pan-African media expert and activist, amongst so many other roles, uh, Rosie Butina. Rosie, good morning. Morning, Bongani. How are you? I'm well. I'm well indeed, and I hope you are too. Very, very well. Thank you. We often talk about adoption across the color line, and this is something, of course, uh, that was uh, your experience in a particularly interesting way, because whilst you were adopted by your white family, you remained uh, in contact with your biological family. Mm. Um, you know, my dynamics were, were very, very different to just, as you said, to a normal adoption because my mother was worked for, for my, my foster family. She was a domestic worker. My father was a petrol attendant for BP at the time. And so although the family gave me a lot of the um, a, a wonderful opportunities and so forth and the sacrifices that they made both for my foster family and for my biological family, um, the dynamics of growing up in two different worlds were very, very real. And also the fact that I, it was during the apartheid era where everything white was right. So growing up, for me, identity crisis was just actually believing that black was inferior. And so some of these, 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 these ideals, I, I, began, began, I, I, was, I found incredibly challenging and started to ask questions, especially when I got to university. And you must understand that I went to a private school, so the political landscape was very, very, um, it was very, very jaded. And so getting to university and people are talking about black pride, and I'm like, no, these people are delusional. There's no such thing. You know, um, uh, I'll never forget the one story when, when, when we were on holiday in Platonburg Bay and, and Comrade uh, Kushani was assassinated. And the fear on so many white people's um, voices and, and, and opinions on, well, you know, this, this, this terrorist now, we've got to leave the country, the country's going to go to the dogs. And for me, I was totally intrigued by this because I thought, well, who was this powerful man that he's put so much fear into all of these people? You know, so, so the dynamics of, of the identity crisis were there, but then it's also just the confusion um, of, 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 yeah, sorry. That's what piqued my interest because, of course, we can talk about these stories in terms of the political in a broad sense, but for you it was very much a personal journey. Talk to me about the confusion mm. of knowing who your mother and father are, but at the same time uh, having this foster family that has given you all these privileges. Uh, what was that experience like, perhaps as a teenager? Take mm. me to those moments. I think, to be honest, it was a lot of denial. So, for instance, when my mother's mom, I never called my, my, my biological mother mama, only when I went home to Bougain. So, I used to call her Bumba, which was a nickname that my foster family gave her because it was, she, she was big and it was, it was short for Fatty Bum Bum. So, in terms of those ideals of not even acknowledging or recognizing or respecting my parents growing up was one problem. 
Number two was trying to hide away from my blackness. So going to visit my white friends and obviously there's either going to be a black domestic worker or a black gardener or somebody working in the house and cringing and hoping that they would never ever greet me or acknowledge me because I didn't want to have to reply back. I mean, I would never speak the African language anyway, but I would always have to reply back. I don't, I only speak English, um, you know, and so dealing with those things and then going to my first um, 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 a uh, mixed party, which, which, which happened at, at, at a friend of mine who lived across the road from me in Marentia, and being at this party and then going around the corner and to the toilet and listening to, to a group of guys and girls saying, okay, well, you know, do you mind dancing with the one guy? I was like, no, I can't dance with the black girl. And I'm thinking, well, this conversation was happening that I wasn't supposed to hear where they were saying, please, can you just dance with her so she doesn't have to feel left out? And then me going home that night praying and saying, please, can God just wake me up tomorrow morning to be a white girl so I don't have to go through all of these different things. When did the penny drop and what was that moment that made you then rethink everything you've been given in terms of some what appears to be material blessings when in fact in terms of your identity perhaps uh, one could argue that those were in fact challenges? Yeah. You know, and the signs were there, and I always believe God pushes you and pushes you until you finally wake up. But the, as you said, the penny dropped was when I discovered a reality about my Mama Costa family. And without giving too much away of the book, it was it was about a relationship that my foster bro brother had with a, with a non-white person and how the family were against it. And I struggled with the fact that this family had brought me up as their own, yet they were not they were not happy with bringing a black woman into the family. And so I started to, to question that and started to ask questions. Now, you must understand in the household, um, you know, outside in the world, Rosie Mudena has got a voice, she's a, she's a brand, but I never, ever questioned certain things that happened within our household. So the minute I stood up to this, a lot of people in the family were saying, no, 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 um, you're different, it's different. Uh, we, we're, we're not against her because she's black, we're against her because she's not Jewish. And then I started to question that, well, well if she became Jewish, would it still be a problem? Um, and so none of these questions were answered, and it was always the, 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 the answer that was always given to me was that because you're different. And for me, it got to a point where it was like, that's not good enough. And so I grappled with that, and I had a lot of problems with that. And then I went to counseling, and my counselor said, just said to me, you know what, just put it in a book. Write. Just write and write and write until those feelings come to an end. And that's what I started doing. And originally, it wasn't going to be a book. It was just for, it was a healing process. And then I, when, when, when certain things that came up into my past, which I, which I pushed down and I t totally suppressed, and those feelings came up, and I realized that I actually hadn't dealt with a lot of that pain and started yeah. to deal with that pain. And that's when, um, and then I took a, 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 a couple of months back trying to deal with that pain and healing and realizing that there was so much damage that had happened over my life that I hadn't healed. And hence, it took me over 10 years to write the book. I tell you what, it's a fascinating story, and it's all there in Reclaiming the Soil, A Black Girl's Struggle to Find Her African Self. Rosie Mudene is the author, and it's her life experience, and I think it's particularly pertinent uh, uh, journey to be aware of, because there's so much around identity, uh, uh, politics, around issues of uh, race and identity. And uh, religion. Are really brought to the fore in this book, and indeed religion, and what it means. Uh, to have the so-called rainbow experience. It's all there, and it's really telling the political, if you like, through the press. So make sure you get your hands on it. Rosie Mudene, thank you very much for joining us. Thank morning. you so much. Have a good day, Bogani. All right, Rosie Mudene there, the Pan-African media practitioner and activist. The world view. Thank you so much for watching my live video. Um, I've been getting a lot of messages, and I have to apologize. Yes, the book we are out of stock, um, but it is, we've, we've done another print run and within the next couple of days, all of those orders that have been put through to exclusive books in the various bookstores, um, you will, they, they will be delivered within the next few days. And then it will also be going on to online. And um, also another thing is that um, thank you to, to the organizers of the African Authors Awards. Um, yeah, I've been nominated for this book. So that's, that's also just another great, great, great um, victory for me this week. And then also catch, uh, if, you, if you read Drum Magazine, a um, really beautiful article was written in there as well. And just an imparting message, because um, I need to get to work, but you know, the most important thing about, about us telling our stories, it's not about hurting people. It's not about 
proving a point. We need to understand that, that our journeys are valid, whether they're happy, whether they're sad, whether they're difficult. And with that validity is that our pain is also valid and our voices are powerful. So for those people who are out there who feel that their story is unwarranted or not worth sharing, it is. It might not be appeal it might not, might not appeal to everybody, but it's very, very important to understand and believe the power of your own journey. Understand, believe the power of who you are. Interracial adoption is 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 a lot it's a it, I suppose more normal for want of a better word, excuse me, I can't speak I've only had one cup of coffee today. But when when it was happening with me, you know, as I mentioned in, in, in counseling, was that there wasn't any reference so to other kids who were experiencing what I was experiencing. So for instance, there were kids whose parents had passed away, so we could relate. There were parents who there were kids whose parents had divorced and they had found other children to relate to. But in my time, there wasn't somebody who had a white mother and a black mother who was sitting and living in the back room. And the more and more I've discovered and spoken about this, the more personal messages I've getting from people saying, well, yeah, I get it, yeah. You know, that identity crisis is incredibly real. And one question that people always ask me is that, well, are you against interracial adoption? And of course not, because I believe that, that every child deserves love but also every child deserves to know who they are and where they come from and believe in that. And that is where African identity is incredibly important, just the same as Greek heritage or Jewish heritage or Portuguese or wherever you are. But you need to understand and believe and love and be passionate about where you come from. Hence the name of my book, Reclaiming the Soil. So it's literally me going back and I take you on a journey where I move back home for a while to work on the relationship with my biological parents and literally grabbing that soil and understanding, understanding the power and strength behind the Bafokin nation and who we are. Um, and unfortunately, I didn't learn a language and I, what, the Matswana that I speak is very, very broken and I'm learning. But that was something that, for me, that was robbed because I believe that there's also power in understanding your, your language. And so a message to, to people who want to go and, 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 uh, and adopt across the color lines or race lines and so forth, is that yes, do it, but then you need to understand and make sure that these, are, these ideals are brought up within the child's um, um, journey and your journey. Um, so yeah, so my book is, is gonna be back in the stores again within the next couple of weeks once we get it back, in, once we get the next one from printers. Uh, please send me a message if you want more message, if you want more information on how to get the book, uh, interview opportunities, speaking opportunities. Um, my email address is rosie at rosiemathena.biz. Otherwise, send me a message on my Facebook page. Um, my turnaround time for responding to that is usually 72 hours. But thank you so much for listening and have a powerful, powerful Tuesday. What are you choosing to do today? Well, I'm choosing to be African. Oh, by the way, this is um, jewelry from Afrik Jewelry. And uh, if you need any more information on where to get them or how she can deliver it to you, I strongly believe in supporting African brands. So from, from designers to jewelers to books to everything, uh, finally, the world is waking up to the power and the beauty of what Africa is. So let's stand tall. Have a good day.